The following lesson is linked to learning outcome three, writing and presenting. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to reflect on, analyze and evaluate their own work, considering the opinion of others and present final draft. Learners should be able to refine word choice and sentence and paragraph structure and eliminate obvious errors and offensive language. I'm Andre. I want us to build in this extension lesson on what we've already learnt about editing from our first lesson. Now you already know that editing is necessary to make meaning clear and logical. Let's look more specifically at how editing will help you to make it clear, but also easy to understand. Here's a concept I want us to think about. It's called ambiguity. What is ambiguity? You know that sometimes you read something, all of us do, and once we've read it, we're not exactly sure what it means. The meaning's a bit confusing. Let's take an example. Here's a poster which could appear in the window of a sports shop. Rapid sports suppliers and the notice, quantum sports trainers only available here. Let's have a look at this notice more closely. Now, the obvious meaning is that you can buy these trainers at the specific shop only. But the way the notice is written means that we could use the word only to apply in at least two ways. Logically, these shoes are available only here, but it sounds as if the only thing that the shop sells is these sports trainers, and it says that only applies to these particular shoes rather than any other shoes. Any idea of what ambiguity is yet? Let's try another statement. Walking across the bridge, the lovely view could be seen perfectly. Here, can you work out what the subject of the verb is? The verb I want you to look at is walking. It's actually a participle which forms continuous tenses. The way the sentence stands, walking across the bridge, the lovely view could be seen perfectly. It looks as if lovely view is doing the walking. Now logically that makes no sense. We know that someone is going to have to be doing the walking and as the sentence stands, there is no way that the lovely view can be doing the walking. So, the sentence is fundamentally wrong. Are you starting to understand or able to see now what ambiguity is? Ambiguity is the unintentional creation of more than one meaning by faulty language. So in both examples we've looked at, there was an error which allowed more than one meaning to emerge from the sentences. Let's take a look at the first example. The error we dealt with there was the word only. Do you see that the only has been placed badly in the sentence? So what I'm going to do is move the position of that word only. See if this is better. Now we have quantum sports trainers available here only. And because the only is placed at the end, we know that these sports shoes are available only at the shop, only here. And now let's revisit the second example. How do you fix this one? Here, I've altered it for you. As you were walking across the bridge, the lovely view could be seen perfectly. Does this make more sense now? I think definitely. What I'd like to do now is to look at both of these examples and break down the causes of the ambiguity and how we fix them. Ambiguity caused by position. In the first example, the word only was not close enough to the word that it was explaining. 
The idea is to check where the word only is in the sentence and then move it closer to the word that it needs to explain. We needed to explain that that brand of shoes was available at this store particularly and only at this store. Let's look at the other example. I've called it ambiguity caused by lack of subject. How can we define a method by which to fix this error? Let's look at a quick step-by-step -step process. You'd need to identify the verbs, participles, check whether the verbs have subjects, and then give appropriate subject to the verb. Take one more look at this example. Remember, this was incorrect because the word walking, the verb or participle there, did not have a subject, something to do it. Here's an example which we've corrected. As you were walking across the bridge, the lovely view could be seen perfectly. So what we've done is allow you, the subject, to do the walking. Now the sentence is correct. What you need to look for then are verbs, particularly participles, those verbs which end in ing. And then you have to make sure that those verbs are being done by something. You have to add a subject to the verb. I want just to note something about terminology. The verb walking in this example is called a misrelated participle. Misrelated participles describe the wrong noun. So, for example, in our story about the bridge, it seemed as if the participle was being done by the view. The view was walking. When we corrected it, we made sure that someone logically, you, could walk. Remember ambiguity. So check the use of the only and check for misrelated participles in any editing process. And that's all I have for you for now. But join me for the next lessons when we'll be starting to look at punctuation and spelling errors. Goodbye.